Hi, this is Dave Zwang with What They Think. And with me is David Stevenson, who's the product manager for the Mako SDK at Global Graphics Software. Uh, David, great to see you again. Uh, it's been a while. Good to talk to you, David. Uh, so, so first tell us, what, what is Mako? Well, Mako is our SDK um, aimed specifically at the print industry for developers who need to build um, components that process PDF typically although um, Mako actually supports a bunch of other PDLs like uh, PCL and XPS and, and even slightly obscure ones like IJPDS. Um, always with the intention of processing them in some way, maybe operating, you know, making changes to the uh, content, um, but ultimately to, um, um, to send that content to print. And um, it's used by you know, a large number of, um, of customers now who who typically use it in something that is um, um, print workflow related, although it may be more tangential than that. So, for example, we have a, a customer who uses Mako um, in an inspection system for uh, for quality inspection. It's also sure. to do with print, but it's um, 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 but it's a different application than we normally see. So, so basically, it allows you to parse a file, a document file, and at mm -hmm. that point, you can either I guess you convert it into objects or something, and at that point you can either edit it or you can render it and uh, go out to print. That's right. Well, quite often we, what we see is we will be operating on the on the file, um, and it will remain as a PDF. It's just that yeah. we'll be adding some value along the way, perhaps optimizing it in some way, adding some content, maybe adding a barcode or something like that. Um, maybe in position. It's another um, application that. Um, that Mako gets put to. Sure. Um, you're absolutely right. The The way that Mako works is it, it passes the content into its own doc, um, document object model, which we refer to as the uh, as IDOM, the Intelligent DOM. Um, and there you can use a rich set of APIs for actually operating on that content. And you can get to anything that really makes up the document. So you can get to the pages themselves, you can get to the uh, the content of the pages, the fonts, the text, and down to the individual glyph level, um, images, and um, the colors. And we have APIs that allow you to do transformations on those objects. So for example, changing the color space, um, um, making uh, making um, changes such as down sampling images. Um, any any um, operation that you can conceive of, really, that you might want to do to a PDF, you can do using the um, uh, Mako IDOM APIs. Very cool. So, okay, so there's a this is a new release. It's Mako Seven. What's new? Yep. The kind of highlight feature is a um, um, a layout capability. Um, so we had a customer who was looking to um, um, add content. Um, it's actually a VP application, so they need to be able to make changes to a PDF, um, perhaps making some, some space on a page and then adding new content. Now you could do that with the existing um, APIs in, um, in Mako, but it's kind of tricky because they're kind of low level. You know, you've got to create glyph runs and you've got to figure out you know, how long the glyph run is and whether it will fit in and that type of thing. So we thought it'd be great to do um, some layout features and make it much easier. So now you can just define some boxes that need to um, be laid out on the page and you can just fill them with text and you can control um, um, font and um, font size, hyphenation, both you know, horizontal and um, not hyphenation, justification. Um, hyphenation is coming by the way, but it's not in there yet. Um, <laughs> justification, um, you know, left, right, center, vertical justification as well. Um, and the idea is to to have a capability that's not dissimilar to the experience in something like InDesign, where you're kind of pouring right. content into uh, containers. Um, and this makes it a lot easier to um, um, to add content. And we also have a requirement um, for right to left languages. Um, so um, because the customer is interested in using um, Hebrew and, and uh, Arabic, um, so we've built that capability in as well. And that kind of thing is tricky when you get down to the nuts and bolts of, of dealing with the font. So we had a, um, um, a layout engine and we've, 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 um, we already had that. We had some development that we did a few years ago and we brought that into Maker. And it's great because um, suddenly we've got some really um, strong 
um, layout capability. Not everybody's going to need it, but when you do, it makes it very easy to create either completely new content, you know, starting from scratch, or making changes to an existing um, sure. PDF for whatever purposes. Sounds like there's a tremendous amount of flexibility um, built in to, to make a, to do any number of different things, depending on as a developer, what you really need or want. And, but you've got this great core of tool sets, if you will, that uh, yeah. will allow that to, well, uh, to. And the, and the other, the other important part of it is that, you know, there, there's a back end for, for writing PDF, um, that is very capable as well. So for example, if you need to write PDFX4, um, um, that is, you know, comp a compliance, uh, compliant to the ISO standard. You simply choose that as a, as an output option, um, when you go to write your PDF, and we'll do all the things that are necessary for for the um, and for the content to and um, to meet the standard. So, you know, quite often we see customers just using a straight PDF to PDF conversion, where they need to convert um, to um, um, to a particular and PDF standard, and we support a number of them. Um, and we also do some, you know, some smart things as well, such as dealing with um, 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 uh, fonts merging. So fonts um, can be a nightmare, particularly when you have content, and we see this um, time and again, actually, in, um, in print jobs where you'll have a PDF that's actually composed of a number of PDFs that have just been bolted together. Right. Um, and so the fonts are repeated throughout the job. And one of the things that you can you can um, very easily do with Mako um, is just do a straight PDF to PDF conversion and we'll take care of merging those fonts together, even down to subset levels. We'll merge font subsets so that you don't have to um, um, you can reduce the size of the file, and also makes it quicker to go through a rip, which is a lot of the a lot a lot of the um, the optimizations that our customers want to do to PDF are concerned with getting it through the rip as quickly as possible. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So last year when we talked, you talked about mm -hmm. something called Streamline. What is Streamline? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Well, there's there's really uh, there's really three parts to, to streamline. It's the um, it's a component of our um, smart DFE offering, which um, integrates the um, the Harlequin RIP with a um, with a, a user interface that runs on PCs, etc. Um, but one of the um, one of the basic principles of the smart DFE is the idea of being able to and rip on the fly directly to the um, um, to the printer's electronics. So we'd, we're, we're actually ripping the PDF and then screening it and then sending that raster to the um, to the print electronics. And quite often those those will be print electronics, head electronics that come from our, one of our hybrid sister companies, a company called Meteor. Um, and in order to um, in order to do that, you need to be sure that you're going to be able to um, render the, the pages fast enough. And that's really what Streamline's about. So Streamline is three things. It is a um, a way of uh, modeling the behavior of the RIP, specifically the Harlequin RIP, so just to be clear. Um, and we've done that by putting um, tens of thousands of PDFs through the um, um, and through the RIP, and then measuring them. And then we end up with tens of thousands of, uh, of data points. And what do you do with a large uh, data set like that? You apply AI techniques. So we've used machine learning. And what we end up with is a model of the way that the RIP will behave when a, a, a PDF is put through it. So we can um, we can then take novel content, content that the uh, the model has never seen before, and put it through that model and estimate how long it will take the um, um, the job to rip, and then we can be sure that you know it's going to be able to run um, um, at the rated speed when it gets to the um, when it gets to actually printing. So 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 that is one part of streamline. Another part of streamline then is the estimation. So it's making use of that model. That we've um, created previously um, to very quickly determine, you know, the the, um, the speed through the rip, and to be able to 
provide some feedback to the operator through the smart DFE interface, whether or not the uh, and the job is ready to go. Um, and then the third one, and this is where um, um, all of this, by the way, streamlined is all built with Makehead. But the third one is um, optimization. So we have, um, and we've built an, an optimization engine, if you will, um, using Mako. Um, and it's one of its primary aims is to, um, is to flatten transparency. I mean, there, there's, there's some, um, um, what's the word? I'm trying to think of the, uh, the right expression. And there's some controversy, that's what I'm thinking of, about, uh, okay. um, about um, um, optimizing PDF files, because of course, ultimately, you'll be changing the content in some way. Right. But so, so, um, so when we're optimizing, we have to be very careful to ensure that even though we are going to um, restructure that PDF in a way that's going to allow it to go through the RIP um, more quickly, um, that we don't change the content in any way, that no you know, that no text moves or no objects move or colors don't change. Um, and not all of that is built Not realigning layers. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, and ensuring, you know, that order is, is, is maintained and all of those kinds of things. Um, but so that, that um, so the, um, the optimizer then can be brought to bear on jobs where the, um, um, the estimation suggests that it's not going to go through the RIP fast enough to, to run the press at the required speed. Um, and so we can, um, we can apply um, optimization. You don't have to optimize every file and it's up to the operator. We've got a, a mechanism um, built into a streamline now, which we call Auto-Tune. And the idea is that because of all of the information that we've gathered about the job through the estimation process, we can make some recommendations and in some cases actually um, you know, um, automatically set the required settings for the RIP to to do a great job on that particular um, sure. that particular file. So one of the one of the areas is around reuse. So as you're probably aware, you have these these things called forms, known as X objects in PDF. And one of yep. the ways that RIPs can um, optimize the way that they work is by rasterizing those and then reusing the, uh, the rasterized content rather than, um, rather than interpreting and rasterizing over and over again. And this is very important for, um, um, for VDP jobs because typically you know, the actual content page to page or for, you know, across a set of pages doesn't actually change that much. You know, it would be um, the, uh, the variable content that's um, driven by the, the database or however the uh, and the variable data comes in. Yeah. So, um, so that 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 is streamlined, and streamlined is a component, as I say, of, um, of smart BFE. Um, mm -hmm. But the um, uh, the Mako team, the development team that do um, that create Mako, um, have been instrumental in actually building that um, um, that streamlined capability, um, because you know that that that, that development team. Um, knows PDF and also understands um, um, the uh, hardcore RIP very well as well. So it's that's, a it's a great, great combination. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, so uh, the uh, the release is uh, imminent. It's now. I mean, if someone wanted to start licensing, uh, well, we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we're certainly ready for anybody who um, is interested in evaluating uh, Maker. So um, I would encourage anybody who um, um, is interested or has a requirement um, for building some components, we have a huge swathe of example code that um, people can use um, to, uh, to get their solutions uh, going as quickly as possible. Very nice. David, thank you very much. Sounds fascinating. It really does. Uh, I mean, Make has always been a very interesting, uh, a very interesting um, technology, and I think that uh, uh, as it's evolved, it's getting more and more interesting. Well, David, thanks again, and uh, look welcome. forward to speaking to you again soon. Okay. Well, thank you, Dave.